We were talking um, backstage too a little bit about the, the place of vulnerability and helplessness and how, particularly for men, we don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. We don't want to feel helpless. We want to feel like we're in control and we got things and we can handle things. And if we did something wrong, as you mentioned before, we, we fight against that, mm -hmm. right? Because our self-worth mm -hmm. is kind of predicated on kind of like this power above and power over. And so if, they did, if we did something that makes us seem weak, that's like going the wrong way, right? It's not advancing the manhood that we're taught to be. And yet there's these younger parts in ourselves that are so fearful and so like worried about what's going to happen to us and whether we're going to succeed or not or make it or not. And I'm wondering, could you talk a little bit about that place of vulnerability and helplessness and surrender that is maybe one of the more difficult places, maybe it's true for men and women, I'm not sure, for, for people to go to and what you've discovered by kind of navigating that terrain of, mm -hmm. of helplessness. Well, I think so much of what we're seeing in the world right now being played out is an unexperienced, um, an unprocessed trauma of helplessness form now into violence, right? And I'm going to tell two stories. Sure. One, is it, it's a very simple story, but um, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with cats, and I really, really loved them. And they were, they were my way out of the pain of everything I was in. And I, was, I had this cat, and I loved this cat. Mm. And it was something that my father and I, he took delight in my cat. And it was a place that was beautiful between us. Mm. It was a place that, it was like an oasis in the midst of all the violence. Like he would, he would make fun of my cat and he, he, I'd come home and the cat would be in his lap and he would, he would be embarrassed, but he would be there, you know? Because um, he was so macho, he could never say that he cared about a cat, you know? And one day I went out and when I was gone, my cat got hit by a car. And when I come back, I came back, my father was standing with the bloody cat in his arms and he was crying. Mm. And it was the only moment in my whole life that I saw my father be two things, be helpless mm -hmm. and be loving, openly loving towards me. And they were at the same moment. Mm. His helplessness was his love. Wow. So that was the first imprint. Wow. And then the second thing that happened was I was in Kosovo right after the war and two women friends, um, had invited me there because their house had been destroyed um, in the war and it had been broken apart. And they asked if my friend and I would come and help them and then just go and help people, um, you know, bring them supplies and bring them aid. And it was crazy. There were landmines on the streets. We had no idea when things were going to blow up. And it was, it, was, it was crazy. But we were going around finding out who needed what and supplies. And we came to this backyard. And a woman and her daughter were there, and the woman had gone blind during the war because of the stress, and her house was destroyed with graffiti. It had been blown up, and they were sleeping on, on the ground. And she told me the story of her, of her son, how he'd, he had been gone for three years, and he hadn't been back. And she just started to weep. And it was, it, So we decided we would come back the next day, and we would bring them mattresses, and we'd bring them things with blankets, and they can sleep. And as we came into the yard the next day, I heard this horrible commotion. It was like, Wah! And what had happened is her son had returned 10 minutes before we got there. And they were just throwing their arms around each other and they were, you know, they were just embracing. And when he saw me, because America had been supportive of Kosovo, I guess, I don't know why, he saw me and he threw his arms around me and he started to wail. But I mean wail, like, ah! in my arms, right? This was many years ago. And I had two thoughts. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, there is a man wailing in my arms. <laughs> and the other one was, oh my God, there's a man wailing in my arms. Okay? <laughs> and I checked myself and I went, oh, you feminist liar. You say you want men to be vulnerable. Well, here he is. And you are in total fucking judgment. Okay? <laughs> you know? Total judgment, right? 
And I realized how deeply controlled I was by patriarchy, how deeply controlled I was by the notion that if men show weakness, something's wrong with them, right? And that began a whole turn in my whole journey of really looking where I'm caught in that same story because we're all caught in patriarchy, every single one of us. And I think, I think what I've seen in my lifetime is that when we allow ourselves, and, and, and this happened during the apology, but this, is all, this has happened to me, to, to be honest, since um, October 7th and, and, and the daily, 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 the horror of October 7th and then the daily, daily, daily devastating images that we are seeing coming from Gaza. Like the part of me that feels utterly helpless and in grief, I have to let myself die into that daily. I have days where I just weep for hours and I feel what I'm feeling and I feel that helplessness because I know if I don't, I will become raging, I will become bitter, I will become hard and I don't want to be that person, right? And I also feel it's my way of saying, I'm with you in your struggle, I'm with you in your sorrow, I'm with you in what's happening here. And I think the hardest thing for any of us to do is to admit that we are human beings, which is that we are utterly helpless. Let's be real. Let's be real. What are we doing here? Does anyone know? Does anyone have a clue? Because I don't. I mean, really. We are just making this shit up, okay? And, and, and so I feel like if I do not, if I walk around like, I got this, I got this, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing here, that's just a lie. It's just a lie. Everything is weird and bizarre and getting more and more weird and bizarre every day. So part of it is how do we live with both our strength and our yeah. connection and our utter helplessness in the face of it. Because I believe, there, like I said about that door, inside the wound is a portal. The wound mm. is a portal. Mm -hmm. The wound mm -hmm. is a portal. And if we allow ourselves to go through it, there is something else on the other side. I found it over yeah. and over again. Yeah. The place we do not want to go is, yeah. the, is the door. Exactly. Go exactly through. where we should go. Yeah. And the, exactly the feelings that we don't want to feel are the exact feelings to break through into the another thing. And again, it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to actually go into it.